Welcome to the show Israel with Mario Sims and Dr. E. Michael Jones. And we are here to initially discuss uh, Mike's uh, article. Uh, we both read it. Yes. Uh, it kind of has a center point of St. Louis, which goes all the way back to Charles Lindbergh. Uh, there's a whole history here. Um, what's initiated this is that uh, Notre Dame, uh, in celebration of Martin Luther King Day, uh, had two of the three girls um, that supposedly started Black Lives Matter. And so they've been, this issue has been front page of the South Bend Tribune, uh, the Notre Dame Observer, front page. Uh, what did you just mention? Uh, there was another, something, somebody came out and said um, something related to this. But, but it's become a big issue. Uh, fortunately, Mike is good at jumping on issues that are current. So um, how do we connect this all together? Okay, well, I mean, one of the biggest issues in terms of the, uh, the resurrection of the race issue was yeah. Ferguson. Now, do you remember? Do you remember the three of us this summer? Yeah. Do you remember what the issue was this summer? It was homosexual marriage. It was the homosexual thing. That's gone dead. Yeah. That's gone completely dead. I don't know whether the uh, the masters of the universe sent out a thunderbolt from Davos or something like that, but this story has died and it's been replaced by what we'd have to call the the neo civil rights movement. And St. Louis was, in many ways, one of the one of the uh, centers of this resurrection. We uh, were, ta were talking about Ferguson. And while I was in St. Louis, I got to interview, or I got to talk to briefly, uh, Darren Wilson, who was the cop who was in Ferguson at the time. Uh, uh, and he was there. Uh, he was the guy who shot Michael Brown. Michael Brown, the 18-year-old teenager. Uh, I give a description of, the st of, of, of what happened there. Uh, and the, uh, basically, there's a confrontation between the cop and the teenager. Uh, the cop, uh, he goes for his gun, the cop pulls his gun, he charges him, the guy gets shot, and the guy lies, uh, Michael Brown, his body lies on the street for four hours. Well, Mario, what, what was your, how did you understand Michael Brown, what he did in that store? You know, you grew up in Chicago, you understand the, the difficulties that black people have how did you understand that incident? Because well, the media gives us a whole different understanding. I, 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 number one, I've found not to try and not to get understanding from the media because the media, my experience with the media is they have an agenda, whatever that may be in any particular story, uh, and they're going to cover it from that perspective, uh, from that perspective of their agenda. So, so I'm always leery of taking, of swallowing the story as it airs. Uh, the things that, that, that caught my attention was how this thing supposedly went down. Um, apparently, the officers driving down the street saw these two guys uh, and, uh, you know, basically told them to get out of the street and then pulled off and then got a radio call saying that, you know, that these two guys or they, they fit the description of someone that had, uh, you know, committed a petty theft in the store. That was my initial understanding, which, which makes sense. Now, apparently the officer bagged up, and, uh, and then from that point on, what, to me, the, 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 the tragedy that occurred was when Michael Brown, and no one has refuted this, reached into the car to take the officer's gun. Right. Um, I, I, I mean, to me, this is like a mathematical equation. When you get one plus one equal two, so if we take away Michael Brown reaching into the officer's car, quite certainly the, the other parts of this equation would not have um, added up to whatever people said it was, uh, this tragedy, let's just say that. Um, so my concern would be Michael Brown apparently did not respect law enforcement, did not understand how to communicate with a police officer. Uh, and certainly, I know I could say this, as, as growing up in the west side of Chicago, I wouldn't envision myself under any circumstances reaching into a police car, number one, 
and reaching into a police car and trying to take a police officer's weapon. I, I think that's clear. It's clear from, um, uh, from the forensics ev evidence that there was evidence that he had in fact leaned into the car. There was evidence that the first shot was to his hand, which would be consistent to the officer's story. So to me, to build a house of racism uh, in disrespect of black people based on no set of facts, I think uh, you, what, what you're getting in law, it's called the fruit of the illegal tree. In, in other words, you, you, you have evidence that's going in that is now being um, um, mischaracterized to get to Black Lives Matter. And, I, you know, so I disagree with, you know, the garbage that went in um, to, to come up with this situation. I, I guess that's my initial thought. And having uh, read, uh, you know, Mike's paper was 48 pages. And I, again, I've, I've read uh, other things that Mike has written. And back to the NAACP, I think, was the first thing that I read that Mike had wrote. And what amazed me is the detail and the verification of sources and the naming of sources that were credible. So I found this piece to be just a sterling piece that examined not only the initial conflict, but, but this, this evil fruit that grew out of this conflict that, that led to people saying, well, because of this, we have to now start Black Lives Matter. Because the reality, this is a number of situations. This is a, um, a, a polluted river that came into a polluted pond. And, and now you have people dipping into that pond to make their points. When their points are not valid. Now, I mean, certainly racism exists in America. But, but, also, but you have to also look at this was certainly not a situation to build that case on because there's so many other things that come to, you know, Mike makes, and I hope he expands on it, his communication with the police officer when the police officer pointed out that he was a product of a broken home uh, and, and managed to succeed. Um, you know, that dog doesn't hunt to explain why you have uh, a scenario where uh, a Mike Brown attacks a police officer. I mean, to me, this is not a black-white issue. To me, these are issues of uh, integrity. These are issues of respect for authority, which, of course, the Bible in Romans 13 teaches us. Um, these are issues of a person making a choice to willfully disobey authority and suffering the consequence thereof. None of these issues, the, the entering point of these issues, have nothing to do with race. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing here is the imposition of a racial template onto a particular situation. Right. So in a sense, Black Lives Matter, that got started in Florida, okay? That template is already in existence. We know now that it's being funded by certain people. Right. George, let's, let's just say George Soros. Right. There's the, one of the main funders of this thing. We've already talked about that. The AIM article that you talked about talked about these other big foundations. Uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation, they're all pumping money into this thing. What do these people have in common? These are the oligarchs. Yeah. These are the people that run the country. Yeah. And so what you have here is a fundamental conflict between what they say the system is, namely representative government, and what the system really is, namely the uh, oligarchs imposing yeah. their views on other people. So when you run into, so oftentimes the oligarchs will run into a brick wall uh, like the state legislature. They did this in Indiana. Indiana passed the RIFRA Act. And so when, the, when you're confronted with this roadblock, the oligarchs call in their revolutionary avant-garde. In Indiana, it was the homosexuals. They are the ones that overturned the law with the help of the CEOs. Well, in Missouri, it's the black people whatever you want to call them, Black Lives Matter, whatever it is. And so what happens after I go there, uh, this thing mutates from Ferguson. Okay, Ferguson is kind of simmering down. And it mutates the University of Missouri. Now, there is a direct connection here. And the direct connection is a man by the name of Jonathan Butler, who showed up. He was a, a, one of the big figures in the Ferguson protest. Then he shows up in Missouri. 
He shows up there and he organizes a hunger strike. He gets the football team to join him on his hunger strike. The people I interviewed said, yeah, that was a good move because they had a losing season anyway. So they're not going anywhere. Okay, so yeah, okay, we'll get the black people on and suddenly you've got a new revolutionary avant-garde. And what is the purpose of the revolutionary avant-garde? Is overthrow the government. Well, they did it. He succeeded much better, much more in uh, Columbia at the University of Missouri than he did in Ferguson. They literally overthrew the government. The president of the university resigned and the chairman of the board of trustees resigned because of this guy's uh, hunger strike. This is an agent of the people we're talking about, the oligarchs. What? This is how the oligarchs get their way when they're confronted with uh, 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 representative government. Now, the, the, the real story, let's get to the real story. There's a conflict at the University of Missouri beginning at the beginning of this semester, which is that Planned Parenthood got kicked off campus. Now, why did that happen? Well, the state legislature said you got to kick them off. We are not funding Planned Parenthood. Now, Planned Parenthood has always been a tool of the oligarchs. Yeah. The Rockefellers were, were, were crucial, instrumental in creating the Birth Control League, which became Planned Parenthood, and also the Negro yeah. Project. Remember the Negro sure. Project? Well, Mario, you know it. Yeah. Make yeah. Margaret Sanger. Yeah, but, but see, and that's the amazing thing because you, when you when you do the research and you and you research some of the comments, the horrific, the the um, the incredible comments that Margaret Sanger made or were attributed to her. But you have so many people now saying, "Well, you know, the, you know, the excuse those." I mean, she's it, the founder of Planned Parenthood, well, right? Well, yeah, but but it's it, it's 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 uh, it's scientific uh, um, uh, regulation of the race of a race of people or a, a ethnic group, which to me, I mean, isn't that what we fought World War II? I, I, I you know, I, I don't. What what Mike is saying gives me an understanding of how, on the one hand, Margaret Sanger's organization could flourish and be funded by, by not only large organizations, but by the government in, in the name of what? I mean, well, I mean, really, well, you know, there's so many other things that Planned Parenthood does. If they're well, kill babies, one of the things they do. Well, it, That's what they fund. I, I, I don't... I don't get it, and the only reason that it would exist in such a palpable form is because what Mike said that the way it's the, the way this the the uh, it's shaped the the you know well I mean and how do you get black people and women to say no well Margaret Sanger that means she may have said that but look I mean look at the good, the good. they were trying to basically reduce the black population yes it was but, it was genocide against the black people. Right. So, so now you have a black person going to the university and saying, "No, bring it back. Yeah, bring her back. Bring out. Bring back Margaret Sanger's organization." This. <laughs> so, so we have to have a fundamental uh, clarification of our categories. That article you sent me was full of good information, accuracy in media, full of good information about all of the uh, foundations that are supporting this type of stuff. But he got the terminology wrong. He's talking about left and right. This is not left and right. You're going to be confused here by calling, you're calling the Rockefellers left wingers? I don't think that's right. I think the fundamental issue here is the oligarchy versus the representative government. That has been fundamental from the, in the United States from the beginning. It was a, when it was the, credit, the creditors versus the debtors. Yes. It's been fundamental in Western history because it goes all the way back to Greece. Plato talks about how do you have this, how do you strike a balance between the rich and the powerful and the people themselves? Well, the answer in this country is you use the people as the window dressing to give the illusion of popular support when really what you're doing is putting into practice the, 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 uh, the, the commands of the oligarchs. And so what you have here are it's good to have black skin because if you look at the guy, he's black. He looks like he looks like something. Do you know what I mean? He represents sure. something. Sure. Okay? But when you go down beneath it, he's an agent of the people that want Planned Parenthood back on the campus. So what we're talking about, what's the word? So oligarchs, representative government, and we have 
proxy warfare. Yes. Where you're hiring yes. someone to fight for you. So if you're a big Jew like George Soros, you hire someone who's got black skin. They did the same thing here in South Bend. Yeah. Remember the guy wh who, was, who showed up to tell us about the new police chief? Yeah. He had real black skin. And he was the proxy for the Jew who ran the big company. And now Teachman has gone back and working for, that, for those companies that he helped further. So it's the same principle over and over and over again. You have the oligarchs being confronted by a representative government. How do we get around it? We hire proxy warriors who will overthrow the government and put our people in. And <clears throat> I like to, I mean, it's kind of crude, but uh, you know, Vince Lombardi, the Packers won. This is football season because you have to get back to the fundamentals. He's always about the sure. fundamentals. Sure. And most people are not going to be able to read your article and quickly find the, the correct categories upon which they live, okay? And I always go back to uh, when this country was started, 1776, John Wesley uh, and, and his group wrote extensively against it. And the, the, and the main book, one of the main books against the origin of this country, um, the title of it was American Patriotism Farther Confronted with Reason, Scripture, and the Constitution, Observations on the Dangerous Politics Taught by Mr. Evans and Dr. Price with a scriptural plea for the revolted colonies. So it was all warned us, this is some dangerous politics that's laying the foundation for your, your, your efforts over there. And, and what, what was the nature of it? Well, first of all, they didn't recognize God. They didn't recognize that the government is ordained of God. And so once you remove that, isn't it, is it not surprising that the oligarchs take over, is it? I mean, well, it, it's not surprising because when you remove God, you remove uh, God's wisdom and God's vision. Or God, you know, and God's authority. If, if you can claim God's authority, so yeah. if, you're, if your children disrespect you and disobey you, and you can say, hold it here, children. God has called, God has ordained me as your father. And if you disobey me, you're disobeying God. I mean, that you can bring that to bear. Well, but that goes well, back to the, to, to the Satan's first attack against the first institution that God created, which is the family. You can remove the, the head of the family. You, you know, he went right to Eve. You see, so he yeah. challenged the structure of the family. Um, you know, we saw that uh, when we stood with Mike. Uh, when the uh, Supreme Court uh, ruling was announced and the mayor came out, um, what what was just truth? What Mike spoke was truth. It was, in, in fact, I posted on my Facebook page, and this Christian woman responded from Crown Point. She said, I, I, "I put the press release on my Facebook page in its entirety," and she said, and she posted, and she said, "I never told you this." She said, "I had to fight back tears." before I can even respond. She said that was just magnificent. But, but Mike, you know this, what happened was we had a local uh, uh, party leader say, well, he's racist and, 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 and so, so what happens is they won't attack the facts of the message. They'll attack, because the facts of the message are there. They're so well researched and so well laid out, but they'll attack the messenger. And, and so we had to, say, well, you know, we're African Americans, we're pastors, we stand with Dr. Jones, and his message, in fact, is not racist, it's truth. And, you know, we know that Jesus was put to death for speaking truth. I mean, he was tried, what, six times, and there was no false, uh, false uh, falsity found in him. So, so a lot of what happens here is when you take God out and you have a messenger stand up and say, well, let me expose what's going on, they will stand back and find a way to attack Okay, the, the truth of what Mike is saying. So uh, what he said, I found to be completely truth, and it's, it makes sense. But, and, and just as his, his paper that he, the 48 pages he wrote now, it makes a lot of sense. But what happens is he's, exp he's pulling the cover off of this left, you know, right argument, and now he's exposing it for really what it is. And... They're not used to being exposed. No, no. And well, I, I think, well, I think uh, 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 the end of it is a long interview with Phyllis Schlafly, yeah. who did heroic work yeah. against the, human, uh, the Equal Rights Amendment yeah. in the 70s. Yeah. 
But she doesn't understand proxy warfare. Yeah. It was yeah. just not part of our. It was part. Of, let's, but let's be honest. It was not, wasn't part of anybody's yeah. vocabulary in 1964 when she wrote that book. But that is the way the CIA had been working for 10 years already at that point, and they've been working that way ever since. And so what you have again, the common denominator again, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's the Mujahideen, whether it's the homosexuals in Indiana, whether it's uh, uh, Mr. Butler in, in Missouri, we're talking about proxy warriors. They're being paid by someone else to fight the battles for the oligarchs. And the, as a, in Indiana, it's come down to be a religious versus a homosexual issue. Just the, two days ago, the, head, the top story in the South Bend Tribune was the chairman of the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Indiana, Indianapolis attacking Mike Pence, yeah. okay? Saying, you're saying religious rights or religious freedom trumps homosexual rights. That's the way the, that's the, right. way the, the, the right. argument is being framed here. So <laughs> basically, what you're saying here is religion stays within the church. And anytime anyone has any type of religious beliefs and tries to impose, uh, tries to implement them in the world, he will be denounced as un-American. The only people who are allowed to implement those decisions are the revolutionaries who have been certified by the oligarchs to carry out their, their, their job for them. Well, you know, three of the girls that started Black Lives Matter, at least what I was reading, two of them, I think, were at Notre Dame, and for both of them, it said they were queer. That they were gay. Yeah, you, there's, there's, and, and that's what I meant about the keyhole. Um, if you if you if you're forced to look at a at an issue through a keyhole, you're going to see what they have cleverly placed only on the other side, unless you, until you open the doors. Mike has done, and then and then you have the opportunity to develop an opinion based on the facts that have been carefully researched. What they want you to do is is look at. The, the, the situation with Michael Brown and his body laying there for four hours, which wasn't even the officer's responsibility, in my understanding. It was a choice that the ambulance made for whatever reason. But again, this is a very clever manipulation of facts um, and a, a, a very, um, in my mind, satanical attack uh, on the way that God has ordained things, but it's never, see, God is not allowed, because when you mention God, then they're saying, well, no, God is in your church, and don't come out your church and mention God. In fact, if you do, then, you know, God is love, and I've had that battle before. Well, they'll misquote the Bible and say, well, it's loving God, not understanding Leviticus and what Paul said, what Jesus said about Simon, Sodom and Gomorrah and judgment and revelation. They'll tear those pages out. And, and, and it's all about, well, you know, we have the right to be loved, and this is our, I, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it confuses people. In some ways, it frustrates and wears people down. And, and, and I think that's what I like about Mike, because he gives us ammunition. He gives us, he, ex, he pulls the sheet off, if you will, uh, and, and he shows you who's behind that curtain. You know, well, that's called that, investigative uh, journalism, right? Well, I yeah, mean, but, but, that... but who, who controls the media, as Mike points out? I well, mean, obviously, who controls the movies? Who glorifies homosexuality? Well, they've said that there, is, there hasn't been investigative journalists for decades. But, in but the it sense. can't be because who owns the media? And that's where, when, when Mike talks about um, the Jews, and I have Jewish friends, and I have, my mentors are Jewish, this is not a racist comment. You understand what I'm saying? This is this is no different than saying, well, you know, Black Lives Matter, and this is black people. What what this is is a look at Hollywood. Look at who controls the Hollywood controls Hollywood, which brings us back to Israel, and look at who put Jesus, okay, on the cross. The, the, and, and that's how you've got to grow up, and you got to put on the big boy shoes. To understand that this is not an attack against a race That's of right. people. You're absolutely right. And uh, part of the story here is St. Louis. Yeah. Part of the story is that there was a region in this country called the Midwest that had its own point of view and it's had its own political yeah. position. And that position was destroyed. Now, during the 1930s, there were people in this country who could articulate this position and find a lot of support in the Midwest. Right. I'm talking about 
uh, someone like Charles Lindbergh. Yes. Or Ger yes. Gerald Nye was the We're head of the We're talking about uh, 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 a time when Charles Lindbergh could go to St. Louis. Phyllis is a senior in high school. We're talking about the eve of World War II. Charles Lindbergh goes there and he says, there are three groups of people that are trying to get us into the war. It's the Roosevelt administration, it's the English, and it's the Jews. Yeah. And he could identify who the enemy was. Well, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Right. right. That's fact, gone. In fact, and he was discredited. For but that, he yeah. went from being the American yeah. hero. There was yeah. nobody who was more of an American hero yeah. than Charles Lindbergh to being persona non grata like that. Yes. Because of yes. the collaboration of the English, the Roosevelt administration, yeah. and the Jews who That's controlled true. the media at that point. They That's demonized true. this man. And, and where with the entry of World War II with Pearl Harbor, that became completely taboo. And so as a result, you have a woman like Phyllis Schlafly who is, comes from St. Louis. She's the heir. She supported Bob Taft, who was the big hero of the American first Midwest isolationist crowd. But she wasn't allowed to say who the enemy was. And so she came up with this thing called conservatism, which was an emasculated version of America first. It was an there's only one coherent conservative American foreign policy, and that is the one that George Washington articulated by saying, don't search for monsters to slay abroad. Yeah. It's isolationism in some form or other. And that was precisely the battle. And we, you know, I mean, why do I always feel sad when I drive around Indiana? Because you look at these beautiful houses and you think nobody builds houses like that anymore. Yeah. We're all, these are mansions in places like South Bend, in Huntington, where I was, uh, and everybody's living in a double wide if they're lucky. Now, why is that? Well, it's because we, as the Midwest, are a conquered nation. Yeah. And we are so conquered that we can't even say what happened to us. And this, I, this was sort of the way I felt, I felt bad about Phyllis, in a way. Much as I admire her, she was like the Catholic, she was the smartest girl in the Catholic high school. She knew all the answers. She's a brilliant organizer in terms of defeating the Equal Rights Amendment. And the Republican Party treated her like crap. Yeah. I said she's the classic abused wife. Yeah. The Republican Party would swagger home drunk, beat her up, and then say, I'm sorry in the morning. And she'd say, I forgive you. And ladies, pull the Republican lever. They did that to her for her entire uh, career. Well, you know, it's interesting for people who really want to do some research and determine how much money George Soros pumped into President Obama's campaign uh, and look at some of the uh, re rewards and returns uh, that he received uh, through not only favorable uh, considerations when it comes to a um, uh, defunct bank or a bank that was failing in California, which helped to trigger the mortgage uh, uh, defaults, those type of things. I, I, I mean, America's got to decide uh, if, we, if we really want to look, take a hard look at what's going on in this country, or if we want to be offended by Dr. Jones naming names. That, that's really the reality. I, I mean, um, is the medicine more painful than, than the punishment we're enduring because our government has been co-opted? Our government has been, this is not You'd have to go to a crack house to find somebody to believe this is a representative government anymore. Well, I mean, you, it's like South Bend. Yeah. You can talk about how high the grass is allowed to grow. Yeah. And you can spend hours. You can spend weeks. That's what they did. Yeah. But when it comes to something like of significance, well, they shut you down. They won't well, let you talk. Well, we, we talked about, as Peter said, we stood outside the Century Center for the uh, MLK Martin Luther King breakfast award uh, ceremony where the mayors of South Bend and Mishawaka gave out pieces of paper like they were Golden Globes and Oscars. And uh, it, in my possession for, is a email I got from the administration saying that uh, addressing the homeless issue is not a high priority. So, so what we have is style and sort of substance because the taxpayer money is not going to the needs of taxpayers. It's going to the needs of people who are part of this oligarchical government that we have, this oligarchy that's been created that simply looks at us as lumpen proletariat or, 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 or pigs to be fatted and then, and then like cows milk for our tax money, 
only to be told, go out and, you know, give us more milk or make more. You know, you, you have to feel like a serf at some point in this country because that's what you are. Go dig some potatoes and bring them in and, you know, and we'll give you maybe a, a couple pennies in return. Well, well, they, with the Midwest, it was killing the goose that laid the golden egg. This was the gr the greatest source of wealth this country had yeah. was the manufacturing base yes. of the Midwest. Yes, and it's been looted. Yeah, it's been looted. I mean, it, uh, there's still a mystery about Studebaker that needs to be explained. What happened there? Yeah. You know, but then you come into the leverage buyouts of the 1980s, where they load down a company with debt. You know, skim the money off the top, the company goes belly up. Well, you said one-fourth of the 500 companies were in 85 and 86, but the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, that was a total oligarchic move. Yeah. You, all you have to do is read, it's in my book, uh, Baron Metal, The Whole History of Paul Folker, where the, the Congress goes to Paul Folker and says, you're killing us. Interest rates are 18%. We can't survive. And he said, well... Your people tell you that, but my people are telling me they're happy with it. Well, who's his people? Yeah. Well, they're the people who are earning 18%. Well, and, and you, you know, we did an interesting story years ago on the Fed Reserve and how it was set up. And, you know, I mean, the average person can't even buy stock in the Fed Reserve. I mean, it's, it's essentially a closed quasi-governmental organization that the government doesn't even control. It's out of government control, essentially. It's the decisions, decisions are made by a group of private bankers who happen to be members of the founding family, the DuPonts, and on and on and on, that essentially, when you stop and think about this, I, I mean, one of the greatest opponents of war was a Marine Corps general by the name of Smedley Butler. Butler. And I was a Marine, and I, I was not aware of this until after I got a Marine Corps, had to do some reading, but he said, you, you know, we were nothing more than a gang that was being used by the Shell Oil men. And, and that's war, and that's exactly what Mike is saying. The confirmation keeps coming back. Well, you talk about World War II, well, why would anybody push for war? Well, see, I mean, these types of interests can only be paid by governments on war munitions. Well, when this country was started in 1776, Gordon S. Wood teaches at Brown, <clears throat> they, they had illusions that they were going to replace the British aristocracy system with a merit base. He said it was a failure. He said it quickly turned to commerce. It was all about commerce, and you have President Coolidge say the business of America is business. And once you make the love of money sure. and the accumulation sure. of money as the cornerstone of your society, and you glory in it, what, what, what would you expect is going to happen? It's going to be just one evil and deception layered upon another until <clears throat> we're, we're in such slavery, I guess, that uh, we finally... We don't even know we're enslaved. Yeah, that's do exactly you know, it. Do, yeah. do, do you go around feeling that we are, the Midwest is a conquered province of Wall Street? Yeah. Does anybody talk this way? No. Did they talk this way in the 1930s? Of course they did. This is precisely what this battle was about. Exactly are we going to, are we going to, whose who's good is this country going to serve? Even, even, I was going through my grandfather's old letters, <clears throat> we found them, and we had family members that were part of the first American first. And he was talking about one of his cousins was going around speaking in Wisconsin. You know, again, you know with Lindbergh and Gerald Nye, but my grandfather was totally with Roosevelt. He was in love with Roosevelt. So obviously within the family they had a problem, but they were able to speak and they were talking about this stuff. But when Pearl Harbor hit, it was just suppressed. That's why war is always affecting balancing uh, 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 dissent. Well, you just look at uh, a corporation like Volkswagen, which uh, the impetus came from Adolf Hitler. And, you know, obviously they, they created and sold vehicles to German war machine. Well, Volkswagen is a major corporation internationally. Um, so it benefited from the war. It continues to benefit. You know, it was, a, um, it was um, um, an idea that started with Hitler saying we needed a people's car. Well, you know, a Volkswagen. I mean, that's where this whole thing came up. So uh, uh, war profits. You know, while we bury our kids, then you have the, the, the captains of industry it doesn't make a difference what side they're on. They're still going to survive and they're still going to profit. Well, what's holding the dollar together right now? You wrote the book, Baron Metal. 
Uh, there's a big fear that they could go to BRIC, right? Brit Brazil, Russia, right. India, and uh, China. Right. If we lose the dollar, if the currency changes. Dollar as the world's reserve currency. Right. Yeah, what's holding it together if it's not our military? I mean, well, what is our military? Exactly. That's precisely what's holding it together. Right. That's what enforces this. So what happened in Libya? Yeah. What happened in Libya? Libya, uh, Gaddafi had a very prosperous country. The people of Libya benefited from his government. You got uh, 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 free tuition. You got uh, a payment if you got married and so on and so forth. He had gold. He was ready to create a pan-African gold-backed currency. Well, that was his death warrant. As soon as he, th there, are, there are people I know from uh, Nigeria. I remember talking to a priest from Nigeria. I mentioned Gaddafi because that was right when it was happening. He said, all of the Africans are grateful to Gaddafi because he put those satellites up that allow Africans to talk to each other on cell phones. This was the type of help that Gaddafi was bringing about for Africa in general. He was ready to, st uh, according to some reports, ready to take one step further to create a gold-backed dinar, and suddenly they, they declare war on him. Yeah. And this, not only, not only did they declare war on him, this was uh, a violation of everything that the Nuremberg trials said was wrong. So if Hitler was bad, in what he did to Czechoslovakia or Poland, how is Hillary Clinton any different but of what she did? And, and so I, I was on this uh, debate with the, the former ambassador to Iraq on, on press TV, the Iranian TV station, and he's saying, oh, what's, what's this blame game stuff, he says to me. I said, blame game? It's, she should be in The Hague being tried for war crimes, and instead she's running for president of the United States. Don't you think we should talk about this? Is this going to be talked about? Of course. It's not clear that it's going to be talked about. They have all this evidence of what's, what was really going on there. It looks as if it's not going to come out. So this is the type of, um, uh, type of brutality that gets exercised that is, uh, it is probably necessary. But that's this is the brutality that's necessary if you want to rule the world. But this is, that's the weakness of Phyllis Schlafly, because her whole thing was making America great and making it great militarily. Well, the worst thing that happened to the Midwest, the worst thing that has happened to American Catholics was the anti-communist crusade, because that got Catholics to vote against their own interests. It also destroyed the basis, the fundamental basis of American conservatism, which has to be some form of isolationism. Now, how can you be an isolationist and support the anti-communist crusade? It's impossible. And she, so she got, she was my, my parents' generation. She got hornswoggled like that generation of Catholics because communism is bad. Yes, it's bad, but this is bad too. And this is bad for us. So you've got a, an entire generation of Catholics who were willing to vote against their in, own interests because of communism. Well, when you use the word, um, isolationism or nativism, <clears throat> it still doesn't register to most people. So you got you to break it down. <clears throat> and yet, I think it's between serving God or money. And Judas was part of the best family on sure. the earth. He was one of the 12 apostles. I mean, wouldn't you like to be part of that family? And the Jews said, hey, we got 30 pieces of silver. He had a weakness. He was a thief. Right. And once you have a weakness, <clears throat> The devil will enter you. That's the portal whereby the devil enters you. And when the devil enters you, then he says, I want you to betray someone. And in this case, it's going to happen to be Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you're going to, you have the privilege of betraying him for 30 pieces of silver. But so that's we, the way it works. But we can participate in that because if you choose money over God's interest or yes. maybe over your family, your tribe. Well, he did. He right. did. But, but that, Americans. That was the portal. <clears throat> through which the devil entered it. But when you live in a, a society like America where money is so valued, well, the temptation they, they becomes stronger. It, it, okay, what is, the, what is the balance in the scales? God. It's God or mammon. Right, right. You can't so, serve God and so mammon. So if you remove the weight of, if you, take, if you look at it as two weights on a scale, and here's mammon and here's God, and if you take God off the scale, then obviously it's going to shift to mammon. 
And they're going to serve mammon. Or if you're totally dedicated to the service of mammon, what's your main enemy right. going to be? Right. The people who impose godly principles right. or moral principles and say, no, this is the limit. Right. You can, you can have your commerce, but it has to stop here. No, no, we don't want to hear that. Right. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to, want to put any limits on our ability to exploit our fellow man right. uh, for our financial well, gain. Well, Paul would go into the marketplace, and there's counts and acts, when he would preach, the people that were in love with money and making money sure. off the people saw that Paul was hurting their interests. Sure. And that was of one course. reason they went after him. Of course, him. the Temple of Diana. I mean, when they were making their idols and, and selling them, I mean, it was a very profitable business. Well, that's what happens in America. That's how you have a Madoff. That's how you have Enron. You know, and that's why you have prisons full of these poor white, black, and Hispanic people who can't get a job now because the factories have closed. So, you know, they, they get that, involved in... That is a direct result of the... Midwest losing this war. That's what I loved about your paper, which I, I think I'd like to talk about, have you talk about that, because you stuff all these guys, and there's no cotton to pick, so I mean, you know, if you don't have a factory for them to work at, and there's no cotton to pick, you know, and I'm using a metaphor here, what are they going to do? I mean, it used to be their dads can go to work for Chevy and Ford and for, you know, Studebaker and those places and make a dis decent living. They can't anymore. There's this void because now America doesn't make anything. But see, if you're going to work to make money or you're going to work to support your family, that's a, that's a little bit different. Because if you don't take care of your own family, the, what's the scripture say? Well, you're worse the, than... But, in but the government does now. The government what, doesn't need what, the man. He takes was, the man out of the What was the fundamental problem in Ferguson? The disappearance yeah. of good-paying factory That's jobs. Exactly it. Where the father could not support his family. The fundamental principle of Catholic social teaching is that the man, as head of the family, has to earn enough money to support a family without having his wife have to go out to work. Yeah, but no. now look at the educational system. Well, what, now what, happened, what did Phyllis Schlafly fight? What did she fight? She fought the Equal Rights Amendment. What was the purpose of the Equal Rights Amendment? It was to double the workforce. What happens when you double the workforce? You half wages. Yeah. And that's precisely what happened. Well, look, and look so now we've got the situation where a father cannot provide for his family. Well, the whole idea of a father providing, that's not, in our educational system, that's not even there. 60% of the, of the people in college are female. Well, and okay, so that validates the homosexual agenda. I don't need a man anymore. Now it's two women raising a child. And, and that's what, what, let's go back to Ferguson for a minute, because if you look at the number of tickets that were written, uh, 44,000, somewhere like that, well, this is, that's a, a local government trying to generate revenue because there are no jobs. Right. There's no tax base, there's, there's, there's no, no manufacturing, there's no jobs, and so the government has to feed off of the people. It has right. to become a vampire that That's feeds right. off the and people. And it's not an issue of race. That's not an issue of whether black lives matter or not. That, that is an economic issue created by a system uh, where you have the oligarchs more concerned about their pocket than by people, and forcing government to now f scramble to find a way to cover this to, to fill this gaping hole they have in their budget, but, which is going so, on in South Bend. So, so, so what do we need to do? We need to racialize this issue. Of course. To distract everybody, we don't, we don't, we don't, get those exactly. white people fighting the black of people course. again, and that way you can leave George Soros in peace and all those people That's in right. peace, and they can go on being masters of the universe. This is the whole point yeah. of this thing. It's not just happening here, it's happening now in Europe, yes. where you're getting the Muslims against the, the Nazis. It's going to be Nazis versus Muslims again. You know what I mean? But the main point is to get these two groups to fight each other so that no one will be able to look at the real economic causes of what's going on. Well, we're seeing it by destabilizing the oil, um, uh, that whole situation now, which now creates, you know, remember China, you mentioned in BRIC, part of that. Well, now China's concerned because with oil prices falling, China's development is really fragile right now. So, you know, this is really a fascinating subject, and people really need to begin digging in independently and reading papers like, you know, I assume you're going to post that It's going to be in Culture Wars. It'll be in the March issue of Culture Wars I magazine. I got to get that. Make sure we get a copy yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because it, it's, it's fascinating. It's unfortunate for a lot of people that you have to get your facts here. But, you know, we're not controlled by Hollywood and we're not controlled by New York and the bankers. So. Well, you know, what? The, the most striking thing that Mike wrote was about, he's talking to the, the father, the, the fellow that was a lawyer, 
um, Jeff or Joe, I forgot his name, uh, Fred, I think it was Fred, and uh, Mike's going, you know, it took me 35 years of really hard work to get to the bottom of some of what's really going on. And now I got to bring this guy up to speed in one hour. Well, I mean, in a way I was thinking, you know, you do all this work, it takes you 35 years of your life, and now you can just get on the internet and figure it out in an hour. <laughs> but you really can figure if you, it out. If, if, you're, if you're not afraid. Yeah. If you're, right. if you're afraid to know, if you're afraid that uh, saying something like this is going to jeopardize your position as the head of the Catholic Lawyers Guild or right. something like that, right. well, then you don't want to know it. You don't want to know it, and then you'll denounce me. Well, of course, you know? and, and, and that's, again, that's what happened. You know, and, and I had a front row seat to that. Mike, we stood with Mike because what he spoke was truth. And there was this vicious, uh, factually flawed attack calling him a racist and, you know, anti-Semitic. And, and it's just, it was, a, it was a position that Jesus took in the Bible. Uh, you know, that's how, re, that's how absurd this attack is. Well, I mean, what he said was biblical. Do you, uh, do you think, we're all in our 60s, uh, do you think that we grew up in an era where we had more freedom to speak out, you know, and now people younger than us, it's been, the suppression is what they're used to? And well, I, I don't think that. I, I mean, we, we were also alive during the periods of COINTELPRO and those type of things that the government ran. I, I think now you realize that this government uh, will do anything it can to continue to, uh, uh, to exist, which, and which when I say government, I'm not talking about bureaucrats, I'm talking about George Soros who funds the politicians. I'm talking about the, the Wall Street financiers who all of these, you and I can't, we can't give Hillary Clinton or, or you know, Bernie money. I mean, our, we write them a check for 100, that's me. These guys are raising two or 300 million dollars. Who does that come from? You know, when you understand that, you understand why they can't speak the truth, and you understand the massive resources that are available uh, to, to a corporation and to the, the oligarchs themselves to silence any oppression, I well, mean, you know, to silence any, any opposition. But the, the worst thing is when you internalize the commands of your oppressors. Right. Yes. In other words, where you say, no, no, this is really free. Well, it's Stockholm Syndrome. I that's mean, right. That's you right. identify I, I, with your captors. Right, right. You know? Well, and it has a black face sometimes. Black Lives Matter. I mean, here you have or, these or kids. It's, or it's Catholics. There, yes. there are Catholics who yeah. will be appointed to be the commissar who will tell you what you need to do to be considered a good Catholic. Or remain silent when we have a situation when the mayor of South Bend comes out and says, I am an example. I, I, I want your kid to be like mine. Well, wait a second. Whoa. I mean, it's has, just, you know the what? Church, the, the church has internalized the commands of its oppressors, yeah. and they don't. It's, it's another long story. I mean, we sort of adverted to it, but there's another long story here. But the point is here: that's the worst type of bondage. Yeah. When you say these these chains, I'm going to put them on myself. Put, exactly. And that's you know exactly what? After right. I lock my, it's like this. You know what I'm going to call it? I'm going to call it liberation. Yeah. That's well, called sexual liberation. Yeah. I can do whatever I want to to put myself in bondage. Well, Mike, we had a press conference last summer, and, and the chains should have fallen off. But what you saw is, oh, I want these chains back on. What are you doing? I, don't tell me truth. It's not really true. And matter of fact, you're racist, and you're anti-Semitic, and so my chains stay on. And that's exactly what happened. For someone even as sophisticated as Phyllis Schlafly, yeah. I still think that the, this identification uh, with the, the oppressor, yeah. The oppressor in this sense, she, she wrote the book, the oppressor was the Republican Party, yeah. who would nominate a fall guy like Bob Dole, yeah. whose only job was to destroy Pat Buchanan. He wasn't there to win the election, he was there to destroy Pat Buchanan. And yet she would continue to identify with that type of Well, that, that reminds me of a book titled Slouching Towards Gomorrah, which is, uh, Gomorrah, which is really... Robert Moore. Yeah, which is really what's going on. We well, are, I think part of the problem racing is... Racing towards Gomorrah now. Part we, of the, we are, in fact, the war. Part of the problem is, and he quotes um, about how, uh, he has a quote here about how important knowing politics uh, is. You can't know your theology very well unless you know politics, and that's what a statesman was. A statesman would say, no, I understand why you want to pass this bill, 
because but, but what you're looking at is a short-term effect. Here's what it's going to do in the long run. And a lot of people have realized that urban renewal and even some of the civil rights movement, the long-term effect was weakening of course. the black man in the home. Well, you look at model cities and all these programs that were really put in place to weaken the family structure. And, but they didn't notice that at the time. Well, if you actually had statesmen, if you actually had people that could take politics and theology and look, here's what's going to happen. Well, the, the people who were behind that socially engineered and knew very well what the result was going to be. It, it's the black face that... So they well, wanted it to happen. Well, of course. But why, though? Well, okay. Isn't again, that a good decent? Again, if you, if you look beyond the keyhole and then look up and understand that we have a situation right now that in Second Samuel 8, when Samuel came to God and said, hey, they want a king, I failed. And God said, no, you didn't fail. This is, give them what they want, but this is what's going to happen. This is part of Satan's plan. And that's why it is so important to understand this Bible, to understand the truth of the Bible, and understand the teachers and teachings of Jesus, and to activate that in your life and reject politics as your master. Politics uninformed by the Well, and, and that's why the Catholic Church was, has been so under attack. It's the largest group of people identifying with Christianity. Well, if I can just subvert them and get them split and divided, it's in dividing black people. President Obama is your savior when I know a lot of people in Chicago, black business people that supported him early on and won't have anything to do with him now. No, what's that about? Well, because he... Who do you serve? Who yeah, is he serving? He's not serving the do you people. Know what that, Reverend Wright, you know what Reverend uh, Wright's sure. are? Yeah. 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 I, and, and so it, it, black people are being used. The Catholic Church is being used. Many Catholics are being used. Uh, and this should be a time of awakening. You know, those who have an ear, let them hear. But, you know, the tragedy is, if, you know, this, if you had a father in the home, the father represents more than just food on the table. You know, the, the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. But the first thing that Job does was he got up early in the morning and he prayed. He offered up sacrifices for his children. So a father's main job is to protect that family. Well, well look. There was someone who said this. It was Senator, or not a senator then, but Daniel Patrick Moynihan. The Moynihan Report in 1964 yeah. said that the black father was the key to solving this problem. Yeah. We have an illegitimacy problem. Strengthening yeah. the black father is the key to this thing. So he proposed like a thought experiment. Let's have twice a day mail delivery, but we will only hire black men. Uh, to deliver it. In to other get, words, to, to, so, to so, that, so that they will have a family wage and therefore they will be, well, guess what? Guess who turned against it? Yeah. The entire civil rights establishment yeah. turned against it. Yeah. The entire uh, 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 elite uh, groups, because they were heavily involved with uh, uh, birth control. And, and he was discredited, ultimately. He, he was, was discredited. discredited, came, bounced back, but he, and it's not, I don't think he ever got over it. But now right. we, have, we have black people talking about it, two black people at... Uh, that Notre Dame conference, they're talking like we told you so, this is what should have happened. Well, there was a moment and they turned against it. These, uh, these people were controlled by the elites and you know what their solution to the black problem was? It was birth control. Yeah. And they started putting birth control clinics in black churches and they created things like the Urban League, which yeah. has always been a front for birth control. Yes. And so it was the Margaret Sanger solution. And still, you still got people. Jonathan Butler, he's still working for the same guy. Well, you know, it, it goes back to like the Civil War. I mean, the, the North, oh, they loved the blacks and they were fighting that war because they loved him and they didn't want to see him in slavery. Well, is, was it really this love no, for the black man we, in the North? We, we know Dr. King saying that he'd never seen so much visceral anger and racism as he saw it when he was in the North. In these Chicago. are the ones that fought, oh, laid their life down for the black man in the yeah. South. Yeah. Well, they, they didn't have that well, love. History, history has been romanticized to fit the tell of the history and the people who can fund the history books. I mean, that's the reality. And that's why shows like this are so important. Uh, the truth is out there. People just have to do what they've always done, which is search for the truth. And I'm really, really happy to be a part of this because this is truth. As painful as it is, it's truth. Well, what the scripture says, I delight to see that my children walk in the truth. Yeah. And education... It's supposed to be about the pursuit of wisdom and truth, but what happens, it gets yeah. subverted. So you go and to instead of education, you have social engineering. 
And so we're living with the legacy of social engineering that destroyed our cities, that turned citizens against fellow citizens, manipulating the race issue as the, one of the prime ways of doing this type of thing. And so now we, we have to, and, and so the, but, but the really demoralizing thing is when you turn to your brother in Christ and you try to explain it to him, he denounces you. Yeah. Yeah, denounces that, that, you. But, but you know what? I like the show name Israel because people need to understand that what, less than 15% of Israel is Christian. Some, some really ridiculous figure. So when you say Jews, you're not talking about the 75 or 85% that are not Christian. Right, the vast majority, let's just Right, and that's what people need to, when Mike says the Jew, well, when, you know, you say, you read the Bible, and, and we understand that there were Jews that persecuted Christ. There was a Jewish leadership that persecuted Christ. I think this is really Well, and they got all the people yeah. to go with Yeah, them. so it's not like some racist stand up and say, the Jews are responding. Well, you need to really examine what, what's being said here. Because... Not all Israel is Christian. Not all Israel is of Israel. It says in, it, and that's in my Romans point. 9, I, 6. I think because that's how they always like to attack Mike as being anti-Semitic when he really isn't. The reality is, you know, the, 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 the figures were stunning to me. Less than 20% of Israel is Christian. But, 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 but yet everyone wants to say, oh, support Israel. Well, no, I don't think so because that's the same Israel that attacked well, actually, yeah, there's a an big... American intelligence ship, what, in the 60s? Yep. There's a big movement to separate, uh, they used to call Israel, you know, associate Jew with Israel, but now it's Zionist. And so a lot of Jews don't want anything to do with Israel and Zionism. So you have a whole new paradigm coming well, up now. I think that's important because that's how they'll attack Mike. And I think that's really important. It's not that uh, Mike is anti-Semitic, is a Christian. We have to understand who persecuted our Lord and Savior and say that because that persecution is spilling over to anyone who stands up well, against. That's right. I don't that's think, right. yeah, I mean, why would that have changed? Well, okay. because people, they, 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 they play games with words. And, and what they do is they simplify um, their attack and say, and, and, I, and I really was personally offended when they attacked Mike because. I've been an activist for over 20 years, and I certainly have not found one ounce of racism in Dr. Jones. It's, it's the truth of Jesus that he's speaking. Right. Well, and, 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 and we're all sinners, so it's, no one's going to be able to say you're perfect. Jesus was perfect, right. and they still hated him. Yeah. So yeah, we're imperfect, exactly so they're going to go after us. But anyway, uh, we're getting down to the end of the show. So we're just going to close. Uh, this is the show Israel. And it's called Israel because the New Testament refers to Jesus as the true Israel. And if you're in Christ, you're part of the true Israel. Amen. And we need to uh, emphasize that because it, it has a huge effect, actually, in a lot of theology. So uh, till next time on the show, Israel, God bless.